Everybody's dream tag is different. As far as, you know, the, the lower 48 deer, elk, I think there's loose definitions of what a dream tag is. And for me, my dream tag was an elk tag in a top three unit in my home state. I mean, that's, this is where hunting more or less started for me. So it just happens to be one of the best elk hunts in, in the state. And it was a, a hunt that I had waited 12 years to, to actually go after. And I think that has a lot to play into a dream tag too, is how hard is it to get the tag. But it is a very interesting situation to actually have your dream tag because it comes with the absolute most stress of any other hunt that you're gonna go on. They're working their way down fast. Now, I have seen bulls in there that, I mean, they rival some of the best bulls that have ever been taken in the West over the last 10 years. Dude, he's, he is big. He's real big. Wish I had supersonic speed. And just because I saw him in the past doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna find him in the future or when I have the tag. Find the water, find the elk, I guess. It's a nice little find right there. I didn't even know about that water. Might have Scott sit that water. Um, so yeah, when I drew when I drew this tag, I was pretty like surprised because I only had four points and I drew and I was like, no way! I actually drew. I got to start practicing shooting my bow because it's my first like real archery hunt. My, I didn't have a ton of hunting experience in general. Period. Specifically, elk hunting, zero. It couldn't have happened to a better guy. He's salt to the earth, greatest kid on the planet. He's been working super hard for us. Um, and I knew that I would have the ability to take him on his first elk hunt. The expectations going into this hunt with it being like a trophy hunt it was kind of strange, especially because I'm new to hunting. Part of me was like, oh, I want to kill you know, a trophy animal, a once in a lifetime bull. Another part of me was like, I just want to have fun. I want to go, I want to have the experience of hunting elk with a bow. And I want to be successful, but if it's a 380, 390, or if it's a 320, it, it doesn't really matter to me. Ninety percent of the hunt is things you can't control that you're actually relying on. I was relying on water. We were coming off one of the driest summers we've ever had. I was also wanting to hunt the rut. There are no big bulls right now. It's 90 degrees and it's eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm not supposed to be done at eight o'clock on a rut elk hunt. Today's 90, <laughs> tomorrow's 87. Temperature's dropping. Branson was gonna be my right-hand guy for the, for the hunt. He's been a good friend of mine. He's hunted with me in Utah. So to find somebody that you hunt well with, it's a good thing. I'm watching a bold bugle. Can't really see his antlers too well. like 20 of them all in a clump together, but you can't tell anything. Just the bodies. You hunt them all day up there. This road, this is the one that takes you to the top. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to get over that next. See that like, that uh -huh. bigger one? You're gonna be on that mountain, and then you walk across. Wind's going that way, if you're wondering. <laughs> it's good to know. Huh? Breakfast. What do you got? Yogurt and granola. We're going back to where we were on the first morning because I don't think we did enough work in there. We I don't, I don't think we went high enough.
Branson's the glass ink queen. So if someone can find him, it's him. Glass ink queen. Footage. You know that? Yeah, I turned it off. He's a baby giant. He's gonna be a giant, but he's just. Yeah. One day, he's gonna be a giant, but not now. Branson uh, glossed up a couple bowls over there. <laughs> um, one. They're both six. Well, one's a six by seven, right? Because he has the cheater. He has the cheater. Um, the other one's a six by six, a little bit bigger than the six by seven. And the plan is to watch them until they bed down and we'll go chase after them tonight. The smaller one's 345, big one's 360. I'd say 340 and 355. That means we gotta kill them both to see though. Yeah. What can you do? It's weird, it's like we have two tags. <laughs> All so. it's gonna take is for one cow call and close, and they're gonna turn enemies. The bull we were watching feed that we thought was going to bed down and then we were going to make a plan for this evening. Kept feeding and then he decided, mm, I don't like this place anymore, I'm going to go look for some cows. And hauled butt off the mountain into some trees and we lost him. Plan B for tonight. Once they get into the trees and once they get into these little canyons they get into, you can't hunt them. You're relying on a lot of red activity, and we just didn't have it. I mean, if it's hot, you just go higher. Of course, one of the main issues of the desert is no water. We had to pack in our water. It definitely limited the amount of time we were going in for. That, that evening, it showed we made the right decision. I think I'm gonna have a chance up here, either me or Lorenzo. Something's happening up here, tonight or tomorrow. He's a solid bull. He looks sweet. We get a shot at him. It's gonna go down. Is that him that just bugled? Yeah. water up here so the bar diet is in effect for the next couple days. Dude I've got 10 pounds of food. Because <laughs> we don't want to waste water on cooking stuff so looks like it's going to be a pro bar and a tortilla maybe. Yep. You know I did uh, I did pack some ham up. <laughs> Thank you. 
there were bugles going off right away. We were seeing elk and other basins around us. He's peeing towards us. I think that's him behind that tree. <laughs> Instantly my heart started beating. I'm like, oh, there's a bull over there, guys. Something's gonna happen. We're gonna go try and kill this bull. It really, like, it gets your blood rushing when you hear the bugle that close to you, like, because you, you can see it on videos and, you know, people talk about it. And it's different being there with the bow in your hand. You have the tag in your pocket. We sit down and we get set up in, in, that, in this spot where you know, we've got a cover and the first cow comes through and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm like this is, this is happening, you know, they're coming through and like my heart's racing, I'm getting so excited and you, know, you start to see a little bit of brown and it's another cow and you're like, okay, okay, maybe the bull's gonna be next. You're just praying the wind doesn't switch. I mean, he, it seemed like it was a lifetime before he made the move. And when he finally made the move, I told Scotty to draw back. First of all, I've never heard somebody shake. I could hear it in his breathing. Um, and, and I'm kind of looking at the tip of his arrow and I'm seeing it bounce on his, on his rest. literally just drops and disappears out of my binos. Never seen anything like it. If you spine him, he's down right there. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, this is fine. He's down right there. It's not ideal, of course. Like, you obviously want to make the best perfect shot every time, but it's, it's hunting in the West and spot and stock. It doesn't always happen like that. <laughs> it was so awesome. I was so, so blown away, so excited. <laughs> it's fun when you're in them like that. Yeah. You gotta win I was them. grateful for the opportunity to be up there and, and the harvest bull that, bull that could be, you know, a bull, a once in a lifetime bull. Dude, he's all savvy from raking trees. Is he? <laughs> Hell yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just awesome. I love seeing people go through it for the first time. It's just as enjoyable for me. As, as actually hunting. New hunters have no expectations, which is the greatest thing ever, like, since they've never done it. So it really is just the pure joy of the hunt and what they experience. There you go. Thanks. You nice job, Scotty! Yeah. Woo! It's my first elk, it's my first animal with a bow. Pretty freaking crazy. Um, yeah, feels super good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play?
play Adrian Peterson? No. You did it? No. Uh. Shooting lights up 545. I want to listen to bugles down low. So I'll leave here at like 430. There was two big ass beagles down this way. Are they on the other side of the road though? They're, now they are. Frustrating. Well, in a sense. That stock was just piss poor. Yeah. Lost my focus for a while. Thought it was gonna be easy. He's not in that, he's not batting it up. Nope. school over hunting. I told him hunt, I told him school would always be there so hunting was the right choice but he didn't listen to me. So he's gotta go back to school. Um, so we lost a spotter. At least he killed a good bull though. So I'm happy for him. I was trying to take a nap. The flies are bothering this shit out of me. So, I went into hunting mode. I don't know if electrical tape is sticky enough to make a fly trap, but hopefully we're gonna find out. Three pieces of meat on there. Three different flavors. Let's see which one I like best. Um, above it, we have the sweet flavor, which is, <coughs> which is a Sour Patch Kid. So, if electrical tape is strong enough, Hold the fly down. I can go back to taking a nap, and the flies will be stuck to the tape. Uh, we're uh, waiting for the elk to come to us tonight. It's, we got a little too aggressive this morning, so we're just waiting for them to come to us, and hopefully that uh, that works. If the wind stops, it'll be a pretty good game plan. I know we know there's a lot of elk in these. And these cuts back here, this is where they all went this morning. So we can hear them start bugling. Should be pretty good. He's at seven from this morning. He's got him. Do you have cheaters off his royals and yeah, stuff? He's got cheater off that right side. He's the one that went over the hill this morning you're telling me to look at? Yeah. He's all right. Cool bull. Just heard another bugle over here. Six o'clock on the nose. He's the one, he's the reason why we came down here. I'm gonna try to kill that bull.
Yeah. If this bull would have just come out, he was so dead. So dead. Why did he go back in the trees like that? Dude, I have no idea. It's so weird. Right now, we're just trying to locate a strong enough bugle to like actually go after it. And they haven't been bugling super strong yet this morning. So it's been hard to locate one. I was hoping I'm planning on getting on one in the dark. It was, it was the war of attrition. Scotty had to leave because of finals, and then I had two days left with Branson. I mean, it's just so wide open, and the bulls get into the tree so early, it is really hard to have one other pair of eyes. Where do you want to put your ducks? You know, you only got a few more ducks. Where do you want to put them? I, it drives me insane when they shut off that fast. 6.45, they were all done. I, I accepted the tag. I can't apply for 10 years, whether I kill one or not. Like, I accepted the tag. I. I'm locked out, I can't apply for 10 years, whether I have a big bull, meat in the freezer, or no bull. Not a single bull came out of the trees, not even right at last light, nothing. Never came out, couldn't believe it. It put a lot of stress in, into the last day. Changed up my whole color scheme. Went all green, see if it works. It was kind of do or die, really. Either had to decide, okay, am I gonna go after the bull that Branson had seen that's already into the juniper trees? Am I gonna try to go after this other big six point that's super unpredictable? Or this six point that is literally on a string. I cow call, he screams his head off, he cuts another three, 400 yards. He was, I mean, he was 20 yards through the trees. And that's why I tried to move right here because he was going to come out right here 20 yards. So I moved. He ran up and stood quarter away. Perfect shot. Like, perfect. But I had to guess the arch, so if I guessed it right, he's crushed. In my opinion, there's nothing more fun than calling it a bull elk. Big, small, whatever it is. It is just, it's awesome. Every time I look at an animal that I've taken in the past, it immediately brings me back to all the memories, the people I was with, the conversations we had. It's kind of like a storybook. You know what, I feel like helping someone kill their first bull is like the best thing you could ever do. I mean, even if I shot a 380 bull, what I'd be talking about is killing that bull with Scott, watching him shoot his first bull. My bull's heavier though. He's not. He's a six. Yeah. You know? <laughs> He'll eat. He'll eat. I feel guilty sometimes that expectations have some, somewhat taken away my ability to enjoy the hunt for just what it is. And I try really hard going into a hunt to not have expectations, but it's hard when you draw a dream tag 